This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Welcome back to part two of my Zine Quest coverage. So if you haven't seen part one and you're interested in these RPGs, there is a jam-packed full episode that was created a day before this one that included a bunch of stuff that's coming out before this one. Um, things just keep popping in. They have different end dates. I did what I could to get everything in that I can. Some of them will end and it just didn't pop in in time for me to catch. And uh, I think the 80-ish uh, zines that I've covered will be enough for most of you. This will continue through the end of the month. One of these campaigns doesn't end until April. So there's going to be plenty of these zine quest things going in. I don't think it's going to have quite the volume uh, next week. And I hope not because it's, it's a lot for me to talk for all this th uh, stuff. If you are here just for the zine quest things, I also did full regular board game for Kickstarter and regular RPG non-Zine uh, Quest stuff episodes that have already been uploaded. So, yeah. Lots of content. Everything's out there. You can make your decisions and choices based on that. I hope you do find something here that will help you uh, create a better experience because, you know, there's a lot of creative people out there, but the, not every single idea is complete unto itself. Um, sometimes it's just a good start a good, uh, good middle or a good end and uh, the zine experience allows you to just select from there and fill in the other pieces as needed from other components and uh, that part is really helpful so if you enjoy your time here like share and subscribe please because that will help uh, pay for my time for the channel eventually um, about 50% of the people that come to this channel don't hit like or subscribe and that sucks. It would be very helpful to be able to uh, have every bit of creators um, take some of that ad revenue for the things that they've uh, put out there, including myself. I'm trying to support the small guy. Please support me as the small guy as you watch it. Thanks. Speaking of small guys, we have a small collection of flowers and entanglements. It has nothing to do with what you might think of as far as botany. This is about character relationships and modeling those relationships into different graph forms that look like flowers. So um, there's uh, a bunch of different ways to do things. There's eight different templates that this is going to provide. And uh, they haven't all necessarily been created by Luke Earl. Some of them are based on other folks, such as the, the Planar Compass zine, which is covered in the previous episode. Um, <clears throat> and you can hear my voice is starting to die after all this stuff. But anyway, the, uh, the, the way that you track uh, initiative, the way that you track faction experience, the way that you track um, the relationships between whether or not NPCs like you, it can get really complicated. It'd be nice to have a model to go along with that. So that's what's being provided here. You can dump that into any RPG you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be any particular one. It doesn't have to be planar compass. It could be anything. And, uh, they are $3 away from their pledge goal. So somebody help them out, help yourself out and get a nice tool to be able to track things. Then if you've ever been a fan of Inigo Montoya, prepare to die, you kill my father. Uh, Sword Point might be for you. This is a swashbuckling role-playing zine. It is a D100 system based on the Legend Open Gaming License from Mongoose Publishing. And you have different ways of uh, handling combat. It's a little more complex. Um, it's more like a dueling system than necessarily just hacking at each other. You have rules for grudges, revenge, rank, duels, and other cool stuff to go along with it. There is a lightweight magic system, but if you're swashbuckling, do you really need magic? Maybe flourishes. Maybe that's a way to go. Uh, 60 pages, so it's one of the bigger zines that's out there, but uh, if you're a fan of musketeers and 1600s, flashing those rapiers back and forth, or pirates or whatever, then uh, maybe this will be the one for you. Lots of different... Um, things to track, not necessarily just the, the regular um, stats that you'd get. Uh, there's other pieces that are part of it that are a part of your um, swashbucklerness. Then we have Bucket of Bolts, and this is a solo RPG told from the perspective of the ship. So uh, the Millennium Falcon has 
traded hands a few times. There are many other ships out there that have traded hands a few times. And that has created a history to go along with it. I talked about Inigo Montoya from The Princess Bride. And the Dread Pirate Roberts wasn't even the original Dread Pirate Roberts, right? It was something that was handed off. And uh, from generation to generation, people uh, just built the legend. So why not build the legend? Serenity wasn't uh, the original ship by Mal. It was held by somebody else. So who had it before him? What made it uh, possible for him to get it? Tell that story in this solo RPG. Seems interesting, but, you know, there's a reason why it's a, it's a zine. It's a very small number of people that have the imagination to make it happen. But if you're that special person, do it. Then we have Curse, City of a Thousand Martyrs. This is a city that has multi-generations going on inside of it. 24-page zine, and uh, you can drop it into many, many different um, campaigns and different uh, systems, including Torchbearer and uh, Zweihander, Dungeons and Dragons if you want to, Forge in the Dark, Warhammer, Frostgrave, Morheim, whatever you want, you can throw it in there. It is um, about ruins and wizards and evil things that inhabit it um, that may be dead or undead. Maybe they're alien, maybe they're from some other kind of uh, craziness, but it isn't always been that way. At some point, it has been an, uh, a, the Empire of Seven Cities. There's these other weird uh, dwarves of a petty king. All kinds of cool stuff going on in it. So if you're just looking for a nice, dark experience <laughs> of a cursed city, then uh, check it out, The City of a Thousand Martyrs. They don't become martyrs if they don't die. Speaking of dead, you gotta have some dead things in a dying world to glimpse. This is a zine from Morkborg. <laughs> I'm trying to make sense out of it. You have uh, diseases, weird creatures, you got rituals and horrors from the end of the world all thrown into it. Morkborg is part of that uh, old school revival. It is one of the most popular growing systems out there. Uh, it's got that weird yellow and red and black and pink aesthetic to it. It looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, take a quick look. It has been receiving a lot of attention in uh, the expansions, uh, at least one a week for, from Kickstarter, sometimes two, three, maybe even more. There's uh, this zine, there's uh, stuff in the regular RPG episode. Um, take a quick look and see if any of it appeals to you. Uh, the art aesthetic is absolutely unique but reminiscent of things that you've seen from like the 1400s or 1500s it's crazy it looks cool and that's half the battle of getting people to play right having something looks cool so there's some uh, unearthed arcana that uh, was eventually turned into feats i think it's in tasha's about food and being able to cook um, this is an expansion of that 20 plus recipes that are illustrated that you can cook uh, and treat as magical items, have different effects, and go from there. Uh, unfortunately, you can't make it yourself. It's not that kind of cookbook, but if you are looking for something that could be as a story hook for you to find a particular ingredient, then uh, maybe this is a cheap way for you to do that, especially if you have some players in your group or you are a player in a group that is looking for, uh, it wants to make sure that they can have recipes and provide for the group. If you're going to play Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, even, you might want to have a magical cookbook to go along uh, that might provide a way for you to uh, make a new flavor to knucklehead trout that everybody else has been sick of. It's the only thing available to eat. Uh, you might be the most famous person in the whole uh, uh, ten towns if you can make it taste better. So that type of thing, cooking is an important part of life. And uh, this is a, a book that can help you get a little bit more of that in your gaming. And we just talked about Morkborg. We're talking about it again. This is House of the Hollow. So this is a horror-filled mansion crawl. So, um, you know, mansions, they've been around for a while. The aesthetic of which, it really depends. Because the architectural techniques may not fit your um, campaign as far as where it fits in the timeline. I know it like the the different types of bricks maybe stone is better you might have to change a couple of these things um the statuary may or may not work um but that's the only thing i can think of why you wouldn't necessarily want to do it um there's some adventure hooks you can throw in anything puzzles are always great 
uh, you know, the uh, small size is uh, something that you could be able to get through in maybe a weekend. Um, or you can hook this into not necessarily uh, Mork Borg. Maybe you can take this into some other OSR game to go with it. Uh, maybe you uh, have a nice backstory to go along with it. Um, maybe like the Winchester Castle. Something along those lines might be fun. Then we have Last Orders, which must be maybe a British way of saying. Last Call was what we say here in America. 16 beers and ciders. My refrigerator right now is filled with ciders I bought from uh, the Honest Abe Cidery and Meadery. And I haven't had the chance to taste any of it. And it looks like a stained glass window when you open it up because there's all the different colors and things with the glass bottles. It's fantastic. I enjoy a nice cider. Beer's great too. Prefer a Guinness. What are your characters like? What do they want? Uh, what could you get? There's the Yawning Porter. Maybe you get that from the Yawning Portal. Maybe it's just a tribute. Maybe you need some ingredients to go along with it. Maybe it'll take you on a fantastic inner journey that doesn't really mean anything as far as your hit points or whatever, but it has you going through some crazy personal growth like when uh, Homer Simpson ate the ghost pepper. Whatever the case is, you got 16 of them to uh, fit your fancy, spread out, um, explore the world. Maybe there's a reason why uh, one person... One thing in Rhyme of the Ice Maiden, there is one of the story hooks where somebody is just out of beer and uh, it's because something has stolen the beer that was en route. You can have that kind of story going along with yours. Why would you want this particular beer? Here, have a taste. Oh my god, it's so good. Maybe the dwarfs only like this type. Maybe it's enough. It only works on getting goblins drunk. Whatever the case is, you can have a good time with uh, libations as well as food. Get them together. But maybe you want something entirely different. Maybe you want something that is based on what we do in the shadows. A comedic take on the vampire genre. That's what low stakes is about. So because it's just something that's simple, you know, um, not really, you don't have to get the permission from the TV show and all that kind of stuff. Because uh, you're not going to sell it retail. Um, so go nuts. If you're a fan of uh, the folks that are doing it, uh, what's his Jerome... Jermaine, oh, the guys, he was in uh, Flight of the Concords, <laughs> but the, the guys that make uh, Taika Waititi and, and those guys that make the what we do in Shadows stuff out there in New Zealand, if you're a fan of their work, I can't remember the guy's name, but it's because I'm on review 115 or so in the last 24 hours, so uh, if you play a werewolf, a ghost, a mystic, or just a regular vampire, have fun with it. Go a little crazy. Do something no one else would have. And you're going to have these uh, different uh, roles to play, like Judge and Peacock. Just have a good time. Have a laugh. You don't have to have a damp here. Sometimes it's nice to have a good place to go. Sometimes it's nice to have a good way to get there. This is Old Roads, and it is a bunch of maps. Eight different maps, double page. So it is a full 11 by 8.5 when you open it up. And uh, the finished one is supposed to have a total of 18 pages. So uh, I guess that's cover and then the eight maps. So uh, yeah, check it out. And if you like the artwork style, then that helps too. Um, the isometric view doesn't allow for it to be too huge, but you can uh, adjust the scale depending on how you, you feel about it. Um, they don't necessarily seem to be an interwoven uh, set of maps. They have different characters. Um, each one that is available. It's from a cartoonist, so uh, it will have their cartoon aesthetic to go along with it. So if you're into it, if you are looking for a way to make a new design for some new area, you don't have a, a way to go just yet, you can plop this into any system you want as long as it looks like the map. Then if you're looking for something that's more like the SCP Foundation or Cabin in the Woods, Operation Thingamajig is a comedy version of all those where you have various team members that are randomized and you have to go after a randomized supernatural entity. Good luck. Try not to be a D-class. Sticking to comedy, but a little less futuristic, is Pungent Quest. This is a uh, map with a bunch of riddles, traps, creatures, and stuff in it, NPCs, items, all that kind of business. But it's meant to be crazy, it's meant to be fun, and uh, have a bunch of comedy to go along with it. My favorite of the options that it showed was the Bastard Sword, where be my daddy. Um, 
yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. So if you're into the Rick and Morty D&D uh, &D, uh, setting, then maybe this will fit pretty well for you. Or you just found a way, you're bored and you want to throw a little comedy and you're not um, offended by puns. Then we have Realms of Peril, and I really wish they had explained what West Marches was a lot better because it's the kind of thing that casual players won't know to think of or look for. And it's perfect for casual players because the West Marches idea is that you can drop in and drop out. The players don't need a lot of um, uh, advanced stuff uh, beforehand. Um, you can just come in and out on the fly and you can still play through. It's a running off of a D20 system with a heavy amount of illustration. This is one of the better funded uh, zines out there. And uh, there's a reason. It's because they put a lot of work into the art. The idea of that West March thing, it's the first time I'd heard of it. It's reading through here. And it sounds like Adventurer's League. It sounds like something that a lot of people need. I just wish they had explained it better rather than just saying the words West Marches. Like, no, like drop in or, or you know, easy to con control or um, player generated, whatever. Uh, player generated meeting times, whatever. The, the th something else other than just the words West Marches that doesn't in any way describe the activity of getting together to play the game. So that would be nice. Uh, but I think if it has those rules, Take them from here and put them in every single game so that you can still play even if somebody can't make it that day. Then we have the Thawing Kingdom and it is supposed to be based on the Dark Souls series. Um, also the Last Unicorn from 1982 and Skyrim. I played Skyrim. I do not remember the Last Unicorn. I think I saw it and I have not played Dark Souls. So based on those description doesn't help me a whole lot. It does seem to have... Um, the ability to get dropped into just about any uh, system that you want. There's 20 locations, 100 different secrets that you can find, and 12 different animals that are uh, brand new for it. This is a setting, more than anything else, that you can just drop in with its own um, history. It is the Thawing Kingdom, where a king has somehow broken open his heart and it has chilled the land. If you were looking for an alternative to Rhyme of the Frost Maiden that also dealt with the cold, were some other ways of continuing that series uh, with the characters and things that are in it. This would be a good setting to toss in with it, uh, especially if you wanted to change up some story hooks or uh, change the pace up a little bit, then uh, maybe this would work for you as well. And then we have the Tomb of Immolation, which is a different uh, entire temperature to go along with things. This is a lava, uh, somewhat flooded uh, ruin area, 70 pages, made for 5th level characters you can play it 5e or osr whatever you want to do and you need it to have at least one person to turn undead but you should be able to to make it through with your typical um fantasy type of characters have a thief with you because that's going to help with the traps and all that and it's got a couple adventure hooks to get you going there's five new um five e monsters and i guess a couple of them weren't in uh old school Revival, um, or Old School Renaissance, whatever the name of it is. Uh, so that has a total of seven. Uh, the maps are printer-friendly, and uh, you can do whatever it is that you need to do. Pre-gens are available if you don't have any already. So it's a pretty complete experience. You can just kind of run in and play it as a one-shot or a couple weeks' worth. Uh, maybe like a mini Temple of Annihilation type of situation. So the artworks, artwork looks fantastic. Um, it's some of the the more interesting stuff I've seen in this entire zine quest um, stuff so far. So a lot of the stuff I tell people, like why would you create a brand new entire book when you can just fit it into a system that already exists? And um, that's kind of the case here. They have angry trans adventures. <laughs> so it's from uh, a trans uh, girl, they say. And there's three different ones um, from different possible times. I don't have uh, a, anyone in my life that is trans, so I don't really know um, what makes a person angry. I don't know what the rage represents, um, but you might. And this may be a fun way to alleviate their rage and get it out of their system if uh, you play a game with them. So uh, take a look, see if this is, the things that are going on in this system are for 
your uh, group. It's something that you can relate to. Maybe you just want to, uh, I don't know, in this one, there's a genital customization game that throws itself in there. There's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things going on that you wouldn't necessarily find in uh, any mainstream book. That's what zines are for. Be different, have a good time. Then we get more maps, Xeno maps. So if you didn't like the isometric views from before, these are top-down maps for various dungeons, caverns, uh, other locations, layers, whatever you want them to be. They're pre-made for you, ready to go, so you don't have to draw the whole thing out and think of all the different pieces. You can just plop your people in, find some treasure, kill some monsters, and have a good time. We haven't seen a whole lot of anime-inspired stuff, and that might be your world. So this is Academy of Titan. Uh, one of the things that I like is this First Impressions Matrix. It's a simple D6 system, and it tells you what type of reaction people have to you. If there was a way to run a Charisma modifier onto it, then that would be uh, another way to be helpful. And just vary things up, change it up, and uh, go from there. So, uh, yeah... Uh, the rest of it is basically just being in a high school. It uses the Mecha Panic RPG uh, rule sets, and it's about teens trying to figure out how to pilot giant mechs at the same time as trying to save the world. And I'm going to assume get high scores on their, their exams. Then we have City of Flesh, and it says it is a tarot-based femcore roleplay zine. Um... I understand what tarot is. I try to look up what femcore, and I guess it has something to do with lesbian erotica. Um, maybe that's who it's out there for. I don't know uh, if anyone's excluded based on that. Uh, look it up, I guess, and see if if it's something that your folks would, or the people in your group would be willing to play. Um, there was uh, what was it like? Dungeon bitches came out two weeks ago or three weeks ago, and that was um, uh, lesbian based. And uh, in the RPG episodes, you can check that out. This would fit pretty well within it. So if you were looking for that kind of uh, kind of world to work within, then you can do so here, rotting in the womb of a dying colossus. In a different type of grimdark world, we have Dodeca. This is a D12 system, so Dodecagon. That's the 12-sided uh, die. And uh, yeah, if you aren't happy with other systems then you can play with this one um the uh, page that you can see there what the character sheet is like uh what is your legend what is your ability your toughness your evasion your defiance it's all about fighting back uh you do have guile and training and occult uh, skills and whatnot so it just handles things a little bit differently there's also a um uh, a different initiative wheel system that it uses if you like it great uh it's a good way to try it out i think i think there have been other um things that have popped up using the name dodeca or possibly from the same system um it just maybe it's like murka or something is also just in my head bouncing around it just kind of sounds the same so if you weren't happy with d20s maybe you'll be happy with d12s it won't cost you a lot to try and find out if that's the case then we have my favorite title hope is not a plan it's not. It's the lack of a plan, right? It's even made by someone named Steve Wright, and if you have listened to Stephen Wright's comedy, it would fit pretty well within it. So, um, different person, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, it's built on the Wretched and Alone system resource document. So that's the system as you try to portray the life of a pro pro professional project manager. Wow. Yeah. You have a dread about things just going horribly, horribly wrong. And one of the things that you can use to portray that is a Jenga tower. You don't have to use it that way, but that's one of the things that's included in here where things can just suddenly fall apart on you in a very physical way. I like all of these ideas. Love the title. It's for one person, but uh, maybe you can expand out if you uh, play through it once or twice. Build something, try to build something, watch it fail. And do the best you can to prevent it. Then we have Infinite March, which is a time travel campaign. You can pick up a free preview if you want of the lore, the art, and all the stuff that they've got along the way. It's called the Temporal Empire, a primer. And uh, you can get that from clockfacedgames.itch.io. Um, 
yeah, I don't know about that site, but you know, if they've got free stuff, you can check it out there. The idea being that there are agents of time, and you see that in Umbrella Academy, you see that in the one, uh, man, what was the name of it? It, had, it was a John Hamm movie, or uh, Slattery, whichever one it was, and the guys had the hats and the suits, and they were all running around, and they worked for some time. It was, uh, you know, I'll remember it later. But anyway, it's kind of like that, or Fringe is another one where people are running back and forth in time. So if you like those types of time travel problematic universes, then maybe this will be uh, another one of those campaigns that you can enjoy. And then we have Lichcraft, and this is about trans necromancers who have waited so long for healthcare that they just decided to become liches. Um, I can relate to the waiting for healthcare thing. Um, we, in America, we think we have uh, the best healthcare possible. These folks are from the UK. They have so, or, yeah, socialized medicine. So um, it's it sucks for everybody. It's hard. Uh, everything's hard about it. The best experience I ever had with healthcare was in Korea. Uh, you would get in and out in 10 minutes no matter what your problem was. It would cost you 10 bucks. And they only had like a 3% income tax rate for people like me that were running as teachers. It was great. And, um, you know, the, to get your gender reassignment surgeries and all that, I'm sure it's a very complicated system with a lot of things going on. So uh, I'm sure people are angry. And we had another campaign about trans rage. Maybe you get them together. Maybe you get the people together that make them both and you have some giant angry... Um, book about uh, trans issues I don't know but maybe they find each other on uh, through looking at this whole deal the pun nature of it the 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 lichcraft part of it it's been very successful it's probably the second biggest of the uh, zine quest campaigns that I've seen so far as far as revenue it's a funny thing even just to say trans necromancers I mean if you're a lich you don't even have a body anymore then we have mage to order this is about magical, or magical, I can say words, maintenance workers in a sprawling techromancy. And uh, there's a lot to be said for the little guy. You know, the, the little folk that make everything work. You don't have to always be a hero to be a hero, right? You can be the, the people that just keep the, the places running. Have you seen Brazil? Um, Terry Gilliam movie with Robert De Niro, I believe, is in it. Isn't Robert Zero in Brazil? It's the guy from the, the old uh, Acura commercials. You know who I'm talking about. You know I'm running out of brain power. But that doesn't mean that you can't play the games. Maybe Bob Hoskins is in it? Maybe that's who I'm thinking of? Brazil was a fantastic movie. It was about the worker bees. You should check it out. While you're at it, Joe vs. the Volcano. Toss that in as well. There's no uh, magicians or anything in there, but you know they, they go well together. It's their 80s movies and they're perfect. Um, but you can have specialties and skills and and do the best you can to unscrew the universe that has been created by all these wacky uh, kids and and uh, technicians and all those other people. Imagine calling into tech support for magic. Like, oh no, I accidentally you know had a dragon pop up out of nowhere. Then you got more vampires. This is the sun's ransom. This is a world of vampires where the sun has gone dark and you're trying to restore it. So like Daywalkers or 30 Days of Night, you uh, have reign of the world that you don't normally have access to. So it's a different way of thinking about the, you know, the, how the world works. Try not to play Black Hole Sun too many times while you're doing it to annoy everybody, even though it is a good song. There is a limit even to that. It's only 16 pages. Um, so it's something that you can pack together pretty pretty quickly and put together. Uh, maybe even incorporate into a, a World of Darkness campaign or Chronicles of Darkness campaign. So, stuff to think about. I really don't think thieves get enough love. Just regular old thieves stealing stuff. And that's going to be fixed, hopefully, from Tales from the Dungeon number 3. This is all about thieving. This is the issue for secrets and stuff that you're going to steal. Conspiracy theories, traps, tools, black market items, your guilds, whispered secrets, and things to just plain loot. Great. Thieves are fantastic. Have you played the Thief video game? I love playing that game. Um, so <clears throat> you run around and you find the best way to get in and out, take an item, uh, outthink your enemies. It's one of the only classes that can use intelligence other than wizards. Works pretty well. Um, it, by backstabbing whoever you need to, by 
um, setting up traps by disarming traps that, that the enemy thinks are, are present, um, just skirting, you know, the the, the web best laid plans of whatever evil genius thought they were in there um, with your dexterity or whatever um, tools that are in your uh, backpack. Love thieves. And then maybe you take that uh, roguish mentality over to where mystery dwells and uh, in a system inspired by Blades in the Dark and something called the Skeletons, which I have not heard of before, you play a troop of apprentices balancing your own survival and sanity against the need to curry favor with your patron. Wow. So if you've spent a lot of time watching like the Top Tens Network or one of the other ones, and uh, they're telling you about all the crazy things the Roman emperors used to ask for, especially the Russian emperors, what they used to ask for. It was nuts. Peter the Great and all these other folks. Ooh. Um, they were not uh, easy on their, their courts. Uh, this might be a way for you to uh, be part of that. So it's system agnostic. There are procedurally generated tools for making catacombs and colorful cities and populating it with uh, hopefully empathetic but otherwise engaging characters. So lots of ideas and things that they can throw in here. Where mystery dwells, fun may live. Then we have a rules light system of survival in Castaway. And the idea here is you're out on your own. You're basically survivor man the game. You are stuck somewhere. You don't have much to go on. You don't need a lot of rules, but you don't have a lot of tools. And somehow you have to make it through. So, um, yeah, you have a GM. They're going to throw different environmental hazards and things at you. And you or a group of you, whoever, you can committee it. Uh, you can have a, folks, you all fell out of a plane cast up on a boat whatever the case is uh it's an interesting it's an interesting way to focus everything on to what would normally be just like a druid survival check is to make it really granular um and as you can see here are the different types of um roles that you're going to have and, and attributes you have to track in order to handle your own survival i think it's an interesting concept then we have something that is maybe similar. This is the Lighthouse at the Edge of the Universe journaling system solo RPG. So who are you a lighthouse for? In three dimensions, what would a three-dimensional lighthouse even look like, right? Um, and you're at the edge? Like, what, what's beyond the edge? Do you only face one way? Are you trying to draw people to the edge or warn people of the edge? These are probably all questions that are involved in there, and you have to sit there and think about it because that's what you bought the game for. <laughs> it's a journal system. If you want to think about these types of complex issues, then uh, talk to Ella Lim and give her some money. Then we have Mech Tech, which is a draw-your-own-mech tabletop RPG. You can mix and match parts, you can build your own stuff, but it does not require a lot of artistic experience or anything like that. It's just have the drive to come up with a robot and then fight aliens with it. So if you want something that's that simple, here you go. You don't have to go in and be uh, an engineer, technical artiste, or whatever the case is. You don't have to make a perfect Gundam or any of that. You can see there from the example, it's just got some metal-ish parts, maybe. Maybe somebody even took a ruler out, but maybe they didn't. You can have a five-year-old draw it up, and then you can go fight your mech against the bad guys. Very simple, uh, easy to get started. At least you can play it over a weekend, and you don't have to do a lot of explaining. Then we have a space adventure of the Menagerie of the Void. Somehow you've been implanted with a module that allows you to speak to machines, and you have to run a zoo of whatever the universe has been collecting on some dusty old planet. So you got a job to do. Your thing that you thought you were going to do is not possible anymore. Draw out whatever it is that uh, you find and meet the needs of those various critters. They rely on you now. Don't let it go all Jurassic Park. So if you want to enjoy any of this, check out Menagerie of the Void. Then we have another journal slash lore zine, and this time it is the Tales of the Glass Gnomes. These glass gnomes live out in the desert and use the sand to make glass stuff. Different weird secret glass formulas and all that kind of thing. You might just sit there and go, what do I care about glass? I'm going to tell you right now. Watch the Netflix series Blown Away. It's on season two. People can make some fantastic things out of glass. Like, it just blows your mind what they're able to put together. 
I never would have thought any of this mattered or I just was the thing that you tried not to break there's a lot more that goes into it and a lot of it can be beautiful and interesting and that blown away show does a great job of explaining it to you if uh, you have the time to watch 20 minute episodes you also have uh, uh, stories called the salamander and the genie you've got uh, things that are points of interest such as a mighty glass forge lantern halls and all kinds of crazy stuff like that different inventions and glass formulas and story hooks that they've created and uh, things like telescopes and prisms that might have another magical effect that you can utilize later in another game but it is a lower journal type of thing so it's not really a game you have to incorporate it however you need to then we have another technomancy kind of game this is the tower in the garden you have a giant monolith that pierces the sky and you have cyborgs, mech pilots, magic wielders, and whatever other types of crazy people, uh, including demon lords, criminal enterprises, cultists, and corporate-sponsored fascists to fight against. I think if you were going to play something like Alita Battle Angel, this would be a good opportunity to do that. Bird Person, maybe, from Rick and Morty, with the jet-powered crow that's uh, available here. Um, if you're going to have this type of sky... Uh, system. I don't necessarily think a rocket hammer is the way to go um, unless you're going to throw it at somebody or drop it on somebody. Shadowversity did a great two years ago episode on uh, fantasy creatures that fly like angels. Maybe you'd get some um, ideas of what to uh, use for different um, weapons. Talons was uh, I think the conclusion. Something that would go on the feet. Uh, something that you didn't necessarily have to use the weakest part of your flight path in order to utilize a um, whole different story a whole different game nothing uh, like that is going on here it is a complete system uh, using the forge in the dark uh, system resource kit so if it's something that you want to play in this weird technomancy world if you maybe want to incorporate one of the other uh, technomancy uh, games and then back in the 80s we all wanted to be ninjas especially Michael Dudikoff this is Ninja City for Dungeon Crawl Classics that allows you to do just that. You have to hide yourself and you have different types of secret abilities. Um, you can get day jobs, hideouts, senseis, contraband, the bad guys, the good guys, metal psychos in a one-shot adventure, swords with a Z, which is the ninja-centric attribute system, and um, you get access to various supernatural powers. So I don't think an actual tiger jumps out of your fist like that, although it would be cool. Uh, we used to have a lot of video games and things uh, in the 80s that had ninjas in them. I remember it was one like Robot Ninja. Uh, graphics were terrible, but it took place on three different screens and you would just keep pumping quarters into it. Um, I wonder if you could find a ROM of that now. Uh, nobody could ever beat that thing because it never really went anywhere. But uh, the TMNT and under Other Strangeness... Um, the uh, Ninjas and Super Spies games, all those things uh, are great if you want to play a ninja. And uh, if you don't want to invest that kind of money just yet, then maybe throw in a couple bucks and you can get Ninja City and get you started. And the last campaign is Monastery of Saint Germain, or sorry, Saint Gastronomy. Uh, you have a bunch of monks that have been sitting there getting drunk and eating cheese. For centuries with the finest of things in France and some mole people have carved out underneath their um, monastery a different type of cellar and you go around and you explore it this is meant to be comedic it's not supposed to be super dark or anything like that it's just supposed to be light-hearted and fun so if you're looking for that kind of adventure out there in France grab some cheese and wine so that's it 24 hours about 140 different campaigns I covered one guy doing all the art doing all the voiceovers doing all the writing doing everything so that you can have access to everything possible that's popping up on Kickstarter in the game space for tabletop board games all that kind of cool stuff at the end in the windows you'll see links to a couple of the different uh, ones I've already done Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope for sure that there's not as many campaigns next week. This is like a once a year deal. Um, but uh, if you'd like to keep coming back and seeing everything that pops up during the week and is available on Kickstarter uh, and any other crowdfunding sources that I happen to see something good pop up on, 
then uh, feel free to subscribe, hit the bell, do whatever you want to do. Hit like if you want more people to be able to see this kind of uh, uh, channel and be able to pick things up as they go. And uh, just keep in mind, you can always skip through if you need to. Other places don't let you do that. You guys have a good one. Enjoy your Zine Quest.